Jonathan Hung, Executive Director for the Office for Space Technology Industry uh, here in Singapore. Thanks very much for joining us again on Australian Space TV. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. We've been crossing paths. Uh, we were in Colorado. Yes. Uh, we crossed paths there. That's right. Uh, and we were just wondering whether it was the start of the year that we even last spoke or late last year. <laughs> How was 2025 uh, for Austin? Uh, very busy. Uh, and we did have you at the start of the year, actually, for our Singapore uh, yeah. reception as well. So That's right. we had a good briefing at the start of the year. It's a good way to start uh, as to how's 25 panned out for you and maybe some of the highlights coming through for 2026. And that'll bring us into the Space Summit as well. So. No, yeah, thank you, yeah. uh, Chris. You're right. I think we've done quite a lot. Uh, and the fact by seeing you at all the different platforms across the world, uh, Austin has gone out globally and internationalized not just ourselves, but together with our industry, our research institutes, uh, as well as our partners in the ecosystem. Yeah. So it's been a very busy year, uh, 2025. Uh, we launched our next bound uh, strategy uh, earlier in the year. Yep. Uh, and I think follow on, following closely onto that, uh, we also were able to uh, launch uh, our next um, top up tranche of uh, 60 million Singapore dollars that went into our space technology development yes. program fund. Right. So that's building on, I think, on about $150 million that we have gotten over the past five years or so. So that makes about $210 million so far that we have accumulated and we have deployed um, to the sector uh, progressively. How's, how's that money been sort of spent? What's the sort of process that you go through for that? And I take it the fund is still there, but uh, yeah, are you getting through it? Is it uh, something that you're taking your time to go through or are you working to a, a rapid pace? No, good question, Chris. I think it's, it's progressive. Uh, we do have regular grant calls. Uh, in fact, one of the recent ones was in May. Uh, we did a grant call together with the Maritime Port Authority. Yep. Uh, and that's where their focus areas on, was on maritime use cases as well as uh, disaster management, disaster issues. Yeah, so we gathered the local research ecosystem together with industry partners as well because we do value the industry translation yeah. for these outcomes. Uh, about low to mid-tier TRL projects uh, were looked at and uh, we've started the evalu evaluation process to support some of these uh, um, efforts as well. And you're seeing an uptake as well? I suppose that's another thing. Is it, is it sparking sort of more broader interest? You've mentioned uh, the Maritime Port Authority. Yes. So it's even just getting awareness even from the ports on, uh, on their sort of management, site management, I imagine. Yes. I mean, the focus areas are thematic in nature. So we covered the ports and maritime domain pieces uh, back then. Uh, regional humanitarian efforts also have been covered Covered. So that's together actually with our partner, the Regional uh, Humanitarian Coordination Centre, RHCC. So they are a key partner. They were part of our founding members and partners in the earlier launch of our Earth Observation Initiative yeah. early on in the year as well. So those are really thematic areas that we have doubled down on. Uh, we also look at food tech, agri-tech uh, technologies. We look at climate related issues, water quality, disease monitoring, um, forestry issues. These are a few specific themes that we have covered and progressively will cover over the coming months. And the Earth Observation Initiative or EOI, uh, 40, was it 47 partners within there? Was oh, we started with 15 first, 15, yeah. 15. We will generally grow, I guess. From, yeah. But yeah, you're right. Is that, how's that growing? And, uh, you know, that was with UNESCO as well, right? Yeah, so we actually launched uh, that earlier in February. The 15 members uh, and partners uh, that started with us includes the likes of the Mekong River Commission Secretariat, uh, the World Bank, World Economic Forum, uh, UNUSA, United Nations for Office uh, Outer Space Affairs. Um, so we actually covered a range of topics. Uh, we have also had calls related to those themes that we had launched earlier. Uh, certainly, I think it's connecting our Singapore, Singapore space community together with end users and solving real world problems, leveraging satellite technologies. Yep. So we're building upon this base of data analytics that we have I guess have done through our research institutes. If we have ready solutions we can bring to bear to our partners, we're happy to do so. Uh, if areas um, are needed to improve innovation or to do some tech R&D, R&T, to get better analytics, uh, these are things that we certainly welcome our research partners to partner the rest of the world to solve. Nice. Well, that might bring us into regional partnerships. It's a theme for the Space Summit in 2026. Yes. Uh, yeah, maybe which way would you want to go with either introducing us to the Space Summit, but obviously that drives your regional participation within ASEAN. 
Uh, and also your spending in space, how that might be impacting uh, your regional partners as well. So yeah, maybe uh, where are you at with Space Summit uh, for 2026? It's gearing up quite well. Um, actually, it's pretty soon. So I look forward to seeing all of you there. You're yes. most welcome to, to, to participate. Uh, Space Summit held 2nd and 3rd of uh, February. Uh, actually, will be the inaugural uh, launch of this activity. Uh, it's uh, Singapore's endorsed space platform uh, together with the Singapore Economic, Economic Development Board as well as Austin. Uh, this will be held together with the Singapore Air Show. So look forward to, I guess, the best of both worlds yeah. uh, coming together. Uh, it covers a range of topics. You know, we cover climate change related activities. We cover, of course, satellite technologies, uh, applications, end users, uh, adjacent sectors and innovation as a whole. Um, we also cover policy and international relations efforts. And I think that's where it's a good lead in also to share that we do have confirmed heads of agencies from a range of countries yeah. that have confirmed, for example, from Japan, from the UAE, from Malaysia, just to name a few. Uh, and uh, we are looking to tee up actually quite a large grouping, including the likes of our friends in the ASEAN region as well. Nice. In, in Within ASEAN, uh, you mentioned Malaysia there, any key programs that you're working on uh, in partnership uh, that you find, particularly industry to industry, uh, for example, but yeah, where do you see the re uh, your key regional partners are within ASEAN? So I think we actively participate in the regional platforms, so the Asia Pacific Regional Space Agency Forum, for example, or APRSF. Yeah. Uh, that's something we'll be heading to actually in the coming week. Uh, we it's also in the this year, that's right yeah, in Cebu, yeah. and uh, we have uh, participated uh, recently at the SCOSA, the Space uh, Applications Working Group, um, and that was just I think two weeks ago, if I if I recall correctly. Uh, so these things are active platforms that Austin is heavily uh, part of. Our technical teams are, are, are present, our industry partners also participate. Uh, we certainly encourage our companies and our industry ecosystem to work together with our ASEAN partners uh, should there be uh, a joint programs that we can participate and actively contribute to. Yeah. Are, you, are you seeing industry crossing across? Uh, for example, Lat Connect 60 who we work with is active in Malaysia and Thailand as well as in Australia. Are you, and, and we do hear and, and see uh, Singaporean companies even uh, Transvestrial, for example, has just opened up in Western Australia. Yes, that's right. From from Singapore, uh, yeah. Are those observations. Are you starting to see these sort of not so much seeds, but you know, uh, there's definitely growth and uh, cross cross transfer of not just skills but trade. No, I think so. I think Transvestrial is a good example. I mean, at the IEC, we're happy to witness their MOU with uh, yeah. that Connect sixty. Uh, so that's one example. I think certainly in Australia, we have had inroads, I think with our companies uh, themselves, Equatorial Space Systems is also set up there uh, for launch uh, uh, testing, yeah. for example. Uh, we have companies that I think cross border and some of them might be doing a range of activities from capacity building, growing mindshare, I think trying to also export sub components, uh, subsystems. I think these are things that are uh, uh, in perpetuity and we certainly support these efforts. Nice. Well, I'll be at Curtin University's campus here ah. in Singapore uh, as well tomorrow. So okay. yeah. <laughs> again, we're, I'm definitely seeing it, uh, as long as you're starting to see it as well. Yeah. So after the Space Summit, what's some of the takeaways that you'd like to see out of the Space Summit? Uh, as, as, as you say, it's an inaugural one, uh, and does that set you up for 2026? What, what some of the key sort of milestones might be coming through for you? So actually for the first time we are teeing it such a way that right after the Space Summit uh, on day three we are hosting the Singapore Space Symposium. right? right. So that's a technical exchange, we did that this year as well. Uh, you get the entire academic uh, research ecosystem, CTOs coming together. It's a free exchange of ideas and continuity. So we really see the industry partners coming together, the thought leaders uh, and all our government leaders coming together in the first two days uh, for the high level strategic conference. And then it goes into the very deep technical discussions which I think is also important to capture. Right. So some of the outcomes I think that we want to, or at least we hope uh, to see objectives uh, that we, that objectives that we hope to, to, to land are things like industry translation, making sure that we get the right partners uh, at the right table as well, um, strengthening I think our, our Earth Observation Initiative, uh, making sure that the thematic areas that we have focused on or called out, we can double down on. Uh, we will direct research funding to good ideas yeah. and that's something that we hope to hear throughout the entire week of activities as well. So a lot of this I think will culminate in, I guess, a future bearing for us to double down on focus areas as I mentioned earlier on. Well, one focus area uh, I've seen and the IEEE are coming out with some new uh, space cyber, well, yeah, space cyber standards. Space cyber, uh, and there's even uh, recent reports coming through. Whenever I'm reading a space industry report, I'm seeing space cyber. Uh, observations here, anything, and we've just on the back of Singapore uh, Week and GovWare, 
uh, and, and Cyber Week here in Singapore as well. Right, right. Um, yeah, what, what are you seeing uh, in terms of that activity? Are there an upskilling, upskilling training, awareness uh, for, for space cyber? So I think uh, securing uh, uh, communications uh, is critical for us, critical infrastructure. Uh, so two things here. One is, of course, you are familiar with Spectral. So they do quantum yep. key yep. distribution. So that's one part that I think at that level in frontier technologies, we're trying to deploy uh, secured comms across the board, right? And I think that's something that we supported earlier on this year, where they inked a deal uh, with uh, SES in March in Luxembourg. So that was something that we, we witnessed and we see inroads where Singapore companies have been able to support our partners overseas, whether it's in, in, in Europe or other parts of the world. Uh, we are also happy to share that in the week of Space Summit, uh, I think on Thursday itself, we will be hosting uh, SciSet Asia, right? So that will be the first yep. uh, uh, cyber space cyber focused event uh, in Asia. Uh, it's something that will, again, I think it will be a whole week of activities yep. where we have the summit, the symposium and followed by SciSet. Uh, so that will be a key vertical that we are looking at and we are studying how best to also uh, strengthen that, that pillar for Singapore. Any uh, grant funds or any funds allocated for that particular domain? It's really broad, broad based, uh, yep. no specific ones. I think it cuts across the entire space value chain so we we'll certainly have to see who uh, actively participates and whether or not these are areas that can maybe uh, delve into some of our space technology development programs that we run. Yep. Well lastly with uh, an Australian accent here in Singapore, uh, any updates on any uh, Australian and Singapore uh, activities that you saw? We mentioned a couple already Yes. but any government to government? Uh, have you got any Australian space agency representatives coming up for Space Summit? Oh I think certainly. Uh, I think we first and foremost I think congratulations on uh, hosting the IEC yeah. uh, in Sydney. It was so good that I was telling the organisers to do it every year. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, we went over there, we had a very I think that was one place we didn't see each other. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we were pretty busy. It, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a very good exchange over yeah. there. We certainly met our counterparts at the Australian Space Agency, yeah. the uh, Space Industry Association of Australia. Um, we also pa participated uh, in SmartSet's uh, unveiling as well. Um, yeah. I think that's p possibly where we ah, met. We did. There, yeah, yes, at, there, at, there, at the SmartSet you. unveiling. <laughs> uh, right. It's very exciting to see yeah. the universities there and actually we found out that some of the Australian universities are already having dialogue and conversations with our local institutions. Right. So that's a good starting point. Uh, we talked about Trans Celestial having an inroad there uh, yeah. amongst a few other companies. Uh, so I think this will be going on. But most importantly, we also uh, had, uh, had the... Um, it was also at the moment when our, our Prime Ministers, I think, also announced yes. uh, the enhancement of our Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. Uh, that was announced 60 years of partnership. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a long-standing partnership of trust and I think we certainly can build on that to do a lot more. Nice. Well, you've reminded me, we did cross uh, paths in, in, <laughs> yes, in Sydney <laughs> as well as Colorado and in right. here in Singapore. But Jonathan Hunger, it's always a pleasure. We often, it is a, a quick selfie as we, as we cross paths, yes, but yes. it's always good to sit down with you, Likewise, get Chris. good insights into what's happening at Austin and here in Singapore and the, uh, the ecosystem that is rapidly building here. But thanks once again for joining us on Australia and Space TV. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank well you done. very much.